There we go. That looks pretty. So, why? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I've had this idea and I've wanted to try this since I saw that Batman movie with the, the pencils in it. <laughs> also, this room just didn't have its own light fixture, so I wanted to do something unique. Also, sort of practical for, you know, filming videos, right? Might as well. So I figured I'd make a video about how I did it. This isn't meant to be much of a direct tutorial. It's more to kind of just show you how I did things because I just cannot recommend doing this. Probably break some electrical codes. Not that I would know anything about those, but so I started off by just installing a traditional drop tile ceiling. I don't believe I'm qualified to tell you how to do this. There's tutorials all over the internet if you really want to install drop tile ceiling. So once I got the first row up, I just did some initial testing to see how this is gonna look and if it's actually gonna work. Um, I initially was gonna go with two strips of LEDs, but ended up going with three instead. So I just grabbed every roll of white LED strips that I owned and just started taping them to the ceiling. I didn't do anything too special here. I just used a stick with some markers on it to make sure they're evenly spaced and everything, right? And I didn't wanna be too destructive with how I mounted them because believe it or not, this is not a permanent installation. I, I'm not gonna be able to keep this around forever. It's kind of just a fun experiment. Once those were all up, I just did a quick test to make sure everything worked and started putting in the tiles. I was really lucky that five actually fit perfectly crosswise in the room, so I didn't have to do a ton of cutting. Now, originally, I wanted to control all the sections with these large industrial contactors, so you kind of got that warehouse vibe when it all turned on, kind of like similar how you saw the intro there. But I ended up not liking it after all that work and decided to go a completely different route with these little touch buttons I've had laying around that actually just act as momentary switches. But first I wanted to hook them up to some sort of faceplate to actually interact with. So I just cut out these little pieces of quarter inch brass rod I had. I actually got this idea from uh, DIY Perks. He's got a good video where he makes some computer buttons out of these and it looked great. So I decided to do the same. To smooth out the ends, I just put the pieces in my drill chuck and then sanded them down on 220 all the way up to 600 grit sandpaper finished off on some just generic brass polish from the hardware store uh, i put together a comparison just because i was curious what it looked like before and after and i was really happy with the results it actually ended up looking like a pretty professional piece compared to the flat back and forth standing i was doing originally now to outline these little buttons i wanted to make some sort of clear shroud to see if i could light them up somehow and i am just terrified of fusion 360 still so I just made these little hollow cylinder pieces in Tinkercad really quick and printed five of them. The walls are about two millimeters thick, I believe, and they almost fit too perfect. I kind of had to jam them in, but it, it worked out fine. I just did a quick test on one of the scrap pieces because I wanted to see if the lighting effect even worked. Um, and it, it looked exactly how I wanted to, so I just did the rest of them. Originally, I was gonna use one of these blank off plates to mount the buttons into, but it ended up being way too brittle to drill. Instead, I just 3D printed my own wall plate, which actually ended up looking pretty decent. And everything was really tight fit, but I just put a quick dab of hot glue on everything to make sure nothing shifted around. So with the buttons done, I got started on the control box. I'm gonna be using a Node MCU for this. It's a little overkill, but it has 10 GPIO pins I can use. And if I want to add automation to it in the future, it has Wi-Fi and all that. So I just put it in a little breadboard as well because I wasn't final on anything that I wanted to do and I didn't want to have to solder anything yet. 
For powering the Arduino, I just used one of these little buck converters so we could take the 12 volts from the lights and bring it down to 5 volts, which is a lot easier than running a whole extra power supply just for the Arduino and relays, and uh, I think it looks a lot nicer. After the voltage was set, I just soldered everything together really quick, and from experience, I like to put a little dab of hot glue on the adjustment knob just so I don't end up bumping it and frying an Arduino or something by accident. So I'll admit I overestimated my power requirements for all of this. So I hooked up three 15 amp power supplies. I guess in the grand scheme of things, that's a little safer as they're totally oversized for all of this. But anyway, to keep the overkill theme going, I installed conduit and everything for all the wiring to go into just because it looked a lot nicer and it doesn't look like quite such a fire hazard, right? <laughs> I still have to add a backing to the transformers and some fuses and everything just to be safe. But anyway, I took out the light switch that serves the plug that this is all plugged into. Then just ran the wiring for the buttons up into the control box and plugged them into the breadboard. I can leave a little diagram of how this is all set up in the description if anyone wants. Now I can't really tell if this just looks plain awful or kind of nice. But anyway, it was time to plug it in and test everything out. For a first attempt at something like this, I'm pretty happy with the results. I mean, it's not perfect and it's not totally complete yet, but it looks pretty half decent and I'm really impressed with how responsive these touch buttons are. It's instantaneous and it just, it feels so satisfying to use. And the lighting this gives off is just, it's indescribable when you're in the room. It just gives this very sterile, extremely crisp, clean look to everything. Nothing has a shadow. Everything's just perfectly lit. I don't have to move any lights around to film anything or photograph anything. And I don't normally keep all five zones on at once because it can just be a bit excessive. It quite literally feels like daylight when you're in there. So it's nice that you can kind of customize the lighting for, you know, just regular day-to-day -day activities. And when you're sitting at the computer, you know, you're not blinded by an entire ceiling made of lights when you're just trying to get some regular work done, right? Now, if anyone's curious, I mean, I was curious, I wanted to know how much electricity this whole thing used. And I measured 318 watts of the plug and we're charged about one cent per thousand watts here. And this thing uses about 7.6 kilowatts per hour, which is about 72 cents per day or three cents per hour. And on the manufacturer's website, if you look at these exact LED chips I'm using, they're rated about 0.2 watts each. And I measured exactly 207 feet at 18 LEDs per foot. So that's 3,726 LEDs total, which leaves us with an estimated 745 watts. But when I took the actual readings at the terminal strips of the power supplies, I was left with 227 watts. So that leaves me with 30% of my initial estimate. What? Additionally, if you compare the readings at the plug and the actual power supplies themselves, you get about 90 watts transformer loss. So they're about 71% efficient, which is pretty average. For anyone still watching, let me know in the comments below how you think I should add colored lighting to all this, because obviously I have to add RGB into the mix. I could just make the whole thing one solid color that could change, but I'm thinking about maybe adding some addressable LEDs around the edge or something. Or I could go as far as making each tile have its own addressable color, kind of like a disco floor or something, but that might be too much work for something I don't plan on keeping forever. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see some more, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>
neighbors are gonna think I have a grow up in the house or something. 